Hi, and welcome to another Around Amesbury. Thanks for watching. I'm Meryl Goldsmith, and we're going to spend the next half hour talking about the Amesbury Carriage Museum slash Industrial History Center with two pretty important people who are involved with both of those organizations, which is actually one. So I don't know, hopefully we'll make sure that you understand this whole thing. But right here is Kelly Danielle, who is the executive director of the Amesbury Carriage Museum, and actually somebody new to the Carriage Museum family, Sheila Spaulding, who is the Museum Education Coordinator as it relates to the Industrial History Center. And I'm sure you've been in downtown and you've seen the facility right off the upper mill, mill yard. All I have to say is to the left of flatbreads, yeah. right? And <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 with the beautiful lawn and the awning. And yeah. and I would absolutely encourage you to, uh, to stop in. And speaking about stopping in, um, you guys do take like a little winter hiatus and now it's back open. Yep, so April we, we've opened for our season. So what that means for us is we have our regular open hours. So that's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's Thursdays 2 to 6 and Friday and Saturday 12 to 4 where you can drop in at the museum, check out the new exhibit we have. Um, we have programs going on in between that as well. Um, but that means we're officially open for the season. Wonderful. So before we talk more about the museum and the Amesbury Carriage Museum Industrial History Center, um, I just want folks to get to know both of you a little bit more because it has it been a year Kelly yep exactly okay a year uh, now. <laughs> exactly a year yeah. all right time has such a ooh, you know way of compressing and everything so you know can you just share with me with with everybody you know a little bit about yourself and your background and and all of that yeah, sure. So um, I came to Amesbury. Previously, I was at a museum in Peabody, Massachusetts. Um, I was the curator there for six years. Did a lot of similar things, um, being that Peabody has an industrial past as well. So I felt comfortable coming to Amesbury and getting to know Amesbury's industrial past. Um, I have a background in historic preservation um, and what they say, material culture is what they call it, um, as well as history museum studies. So I brought that um, and my time working in another industrial history sort of focused town um, to Amesbury so and you live pretty locally as well too yeah I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm Chelmsford yeah, no, <laughs> so which is, yeah a little bit yeah a little not too bad it's not a, a lovely drive actually. A, a, yeah. a lovely drive <laughs> and so just about a year but Sheila you really just started so you are the new museum education coordinator at the Industrial History Center and can you just like I, this is the yes. first time that I'm meeting you. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I live in Newburyport, so I crossed two bridges to get here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I grew up on Cape Cod, and in my previous jobs, I was a teacher for many years, and then I went to library school, and I became an archivist. So, this so you're bringing like both the education and the, oh, and that's, the history. Yeah. It's um, and yeah. this position is the perfect marriage of those past experiences. And I look forward to working here in the museum and working with the local schools and helping to bring programming that, that bridges th th what the, what's being taught in school with what we're doing at the museum. Well, I know every time we uh, the, the museum has like the family days or anything, I mean, the children and children of all ages can really find something pretty, uh, pretty fun because fun is super important. But, but educational and moving and, you know, there's just so many wonderful things that, that happen at the Industrial History Center. So I'm sure you're going to continue on with that and develop some new things and, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So um, with the season just really starting, um, you have a great calendar on, you know, an events calendar on your website. Um, do you want to just, like, tell us a little bit about um, what's coming up and, sure. you know, what might be new or, you know, whatever? Yeah. yeah. So we have a bunch of new programs this year. Um, in May, uh, the next one coming up, well, actually, technically, the next one coming up is our exhibit opening. Um, and it should be open now. And it is um, called Memories in Metal. And it is the work of um, a machinist who worked at GE. His name is Abraham Megadici. And he worked at GE and Lynn for 40 years. And um, he used his machinist skills, a very industrial history-based um, sort of career that will be familiar to a lot of people in Amesbury, um, to inspire the artwork he created. So he would bring home essentially chunks of scrap metal and make miniatures of everyday items. Um, you name it, he made it out of metal. He made over 400 uh, different pieces as gifts. 400? 
hundred. Yeah. So like <laughs> like miniatures, little little are are some sculptural. Um, or? Some are a little bit bigger. They all weigh a ton because they're made out of <laughs> solid metal. They're so, so heavy. We yeah. have some tiny um, automobiles, carriages, anvils, uh, pretty much anything you can imagine. He would look at a shape um, and he would see an object and he would create it using his machinist skills. So we are featuring um, a few about more than a dozen, a few more than a dozen of his pieces uh, at the Industrial History Center and our exhibit explores sort of that uh, merger between a very um, skilled tradesperson and an artist at heart. So uh, Abraham's son Robert is giving um, a talk at the exhibit opening uh, and he talks about you know his memories tied to those pieces and the stories behind each of them. So it's a great merger of um, something that's tied really strongly to local history and art. So that's our exhibit. Um, that will be open at the IHC. Um, and then coming up in addition, we have a bunch of sort of more fun-based events. So one of them is called Hats and High Tea, and that's <laughs> inspired by the Merrimack Hat Company. So if you're an Amesbury resident, you'd be familiar with um, the long history of hat making. And uh, this is right before um, you know Mother's Day, and it is something where you can come and have a, a high tea experience and see a collection of photographs of people working in the um, Merrimack Hat Company building. So, well, you do have time. like kind of a permanent, a little exhibit of of hats and stuff like that from we the do, Merrimack yeah. Hat Factory. Uh, are, are those from the Merrimack Hat Factory? They, they are. are. Okay. Yep. So there's several examples. They're um, men and women's hats um, as part of our permanent exhibit covering you know one of the many industries of Amesbury. So you can see some hats and then um, enjoy a high tea, a traditional high tea. Um, there's a hat contest, so, um, you know, <laughs> voting on the best hat. So yeah, we really use the history to inspire that particular event. I have to say that um, being an artist myself, I love that marriage. And there's so many, so many artists and talented people yes. in Amesbury, in the greater Amesbury community. I mean, oh my goodness. I mean, even like Bonnie Brady, who works for the Amesbury Carriage Museum, she's yep. an unbelievable artist. And, yeah. you know, but it's like, it's just so inspiring to, yeah. to, 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 to be able to see that. And I, I would love to see this gentleman's vision about like a hunk of, like they're tossing it out, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. It was a, and he's like, scrap I ball. think that's going to be this or whatever. Mm -hmm. What are some of the objects that he made? Yeah. My, my favorite was the bicycle. There's this little yep. tiny bicycle. With like a, how big is with it? With a working Sheila? chain. It's little. With really? really? It, it's that a, actually, Barbie, it would, a Barbie would look like, like a giant on this. Yeah. Um, oh that actually just, works. Yep. And the attention to detail is so incredible. Yeah. So we have his original tool chest that he used as a machinist and then he made an exact miniature of it complete with all of the tools to scale and they all have their appropriate markings. So um, you see, you know, his tool chest and then his own interpretation of his tool chest, which is really awesome. And how big see. is that about? The actual tool chest is this big. The interpretation oh of it is this big. <laughs> and we actually included the weights of everything on all of the object labels because you'd be very surprised. You look at something and it's, you know, small and it weighs it, 11 pounds. So what, do, like, do you remember what the bicycle weighs about? The is bicycle it? Pro weighs maybe, I think it weighs a little bit less. A little yes. bit less. A little but, bit less. But yeah. still, you wouldn't expect something that small to even be like more than two pounds right and it's yep. it could be like eight or ten pounds or something right Sheila yes. I mean it's really I mean that's incredible because yeah. it's saw it must be solid it is and like I like to say nothing in industrial history is light everything is heavy <laughs> yeah, so it provides quite a challenge when we do exhibits um, just because everything was meant to be used it was heavy it was industrial in nature so we we uh, encounter that challenge all the time yeah moving things storing yes. things Terrible. No, I, <laughs> yeah, carriage, carriage moving. Ab absolutely. So as we look, like that's kind of like some springtime things that mm -hmm. are going on. Um, as you get like farther into the into the year, yep. can you talk about that stuff a little bit? Sure. So coming up in the summer, we have um, an event called Going Places, where we celebrate all the ways that um, transportation happened in Amesbury. So uh, railroad, carriage, automobiles. There was even a bicycle manufacturing, Amesbury Bicycle. Um, they made bicycles in Amesbury. I didn't know that. Yeah. They where, do, where were they located? Do you know? Off the top of my head, I don't know, but okay. I know I have it somewhere. Okay. All um, right. So our event celebrates all the ways in which people went places. So uh, the Industrial History Center, uh, 
uh, will be open, filled with model trains running in and outside of the Industrial History Center. Uh, we have a meet and greet with Amelia Earhart, because if you know a little bit of Amesbury history, she taught here for a few months. So Amelia Earhart herself. She's from Amesbury. Yes, she's coming <laughs> to our uh, she's coming to our event, um, and then all kinds of ways to participate in um, making. We're really trying to embrace that spirit of the maker. So we have um, a Lego test track where you can make your own vehicle. We have um, sort of make and take things to bring with you. So it's an event geared at families uh, to celebrate all the ways people uh, move themselves going places. And Amesbury has uh, certainly a strong history in um, transportation, modes of transportation, that kind of thing. So that's in the summer. Um, and then along the same lines is that we have something called Makers in the Mill Yard, which um, would be a great connection to the art art history mm -hmm. connection mm -hmm. that you talked about. Um, it's in it's in later in the summer in July, and it's a celebration of makers, thrifters, upcyclers, crafters, um, and it happens in the mill yard. So a combo of community yard sale and then really celebrating people who um, both historically were makers, inventors, movers and shakers, and still that sort of spirit of the maker that Amesbury has certainly in the arts community. So we're hoping to draw that connection and let people you know, know that you know that spirit is still alive and, and well in Amesbury. So. I'm sure for the kids too, I mean, you know, to look back at what was transportation has to be very interesting. Maybe things that they didn't even consider. Yeah. Or they just saw it in a book and then to see it like I'm a very visual person, so I gotta yes. gotta put my hands on it. I gotta I gotta yeah. see it like in a book. That's okay, but I you know I I, I really think that that could be a way to draw maybe a younger audience into the mm -hmm. Industrial History Center and you know that's probably where you know you come in Sheila you know yes. with your education background but uh, you know you know kind of marrying that with all of your museum experience as well. Right and as I read a lot of the groundwork that's already been laid I think of how I can make activities that are hands-on that children can interact with and touch. I also like to, um, we used to have this wonderful um, local woman, Jillian Fournier, who uh, worked at the uh, at the museum. Um, she doesn't anymore, and it's because she got a great new job. So we didn't, <laughs> nothing, you know, yes. I mean, I've known Jillian forever. We were forever. a good stepping stone. We, we were a good stepping stone. <laughs> wonderful young woman who, uh, you know, used her experience in Amesbury to further her career and everything. But I just remember one of the things that Jillian used to do would be to weave weave with like recycled material plastic bags and you know all this recycling and upcycling yeah. and creating new i love that so we one of the hardest parts about going to a museum usually is that you can't touch things mm -hmm. and we understand that that's frustrating for kids it's frustrating for adults so part of our goal is to make the museum as hands-on of an experience as it can be um, so, for example, um, during our first, you know, during our opening week for the spring, we have um, hands-on grinding of flour with a stone mill. So we have a giant millstone on display in the exhibit, which obviously we can't use or move because it requires a crane. Right. Um, but we have a small version of it, and people can try it, how hard it was to provide that energy to grind their, it's called a corn, and it's a, 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 a mini version of the big millstone. And prior to having a big water-powered millstone, that when people got here, or in early Amesbury, settlement period they had to hand grind their flour so people can try putting you know the like wheat how in much it's so, it, hard. It's so it's, hard we were doing it in the office and laughing about how yeah, this is going to take people forever and that's the point right that's the point i'm sweating yeah. oh my and think about like how much you know it takes well to you're cooking bread probably almost every day all the time and it's several cups Yes. Like, have you figured out how long it takes to get a cup? Um, well, a long time? We will be figuring it out <laughs> yes. because we'll be having many community <laughs> hands help it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's an opportunity for That's people to, so they see how hard that is and yeah. they're using their own arm oh, power. Oh, it's just on a bag in the grocery store That's shelf. Right. Like, no. And then you look out the doors of the Industrial History yeah. Center and you hear the Powwow River just absolutely roaring and you realize why people of the past saw the Powwow River and said, we can harness that power to make a water-powered grist mill. So we don't have to do this all day. Because <laughs> yeah, this is not fun. It is not fun. No. But part of that same program, um, Sheila, do you want to talk about the the, grind, uh, the millstone, design your own millstone? Oh, yes, program? yes. They're going to be designing their own millstones in many different media. So um, so how are they going to do that? Is it going to be like, is, is it clay? Is it wood? Is it paper? Um, is it one, one activity is wood. There are these wood circles that are about the size of a pizza and they'll be able to draw their own design on them in chalk and nice. then we can put them together so they can truly see how it would have worked on the actual grist mill. 
and another is using paper plates. So, and, yeah, and they can draw their own designs with whatever yeah. colors they want. I love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And the, the back of every millstone has a really distinct pattern for the grain to go through, and um, so they get a chance to pick their own pattern and, and design what they think would be I didn't know that. Millstone. I feel like yeah, there, there's, there's lines. Beautiful. Yes, well, I know that there's lines, but I didn't know what they were for. They are to direct the grain towards the eye. Uh, so it doesn't all fall on the floor. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. and so it gets ground right. properly. So it's an opportunity for no them idea. to sort of flex their skills as a millstone designer. So that's really the type of thing that we're, you know, bringing to the community, something where you can experience history in a hands-on way um, in a less frustrating, you can't touch it, traditional museum approach. We're, we're kind of going away from that. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have this beautiful, even in your like permanent exhibits, there's touching going on, going on there as well. and. I, I mean, being that kind of person, I really appreciate that. And I think it's such such a great learning opportunity to be able to go in there and actually do it. And then consider, like, they could go look at that big grinding stone and be like, whoa, like how much bigger that is must mean how much harder it is. You would, you know, yep. yeah, wow. That's very, very cool. Yeah. So I know that they just announced when the car show is coming up. It's in yes. September. I think I, I just saw that on Facebook a couple of days ago I did or something. Too, yep. So yeah, and the Carriage Museum is always involved, or for years and years has been involved with the car show, of course. Of yep, course. so usually we run an event the night before um, titled Driving Through History, which is partially a fundraiser for the museum and our ramp up for the fun day that is the car show. Um, and we also run the registration booth. So if you come to the car show, as an exhibitor, that's us. Um, we, we beat the streets with our 50-50 <laughs> raffle tickets and help sell raffle tickets. And actually this year we're gonna be introducing um, a tour called the Automobile Landscape, where um, it is um, something that we offer through the museum and on the day of the car show to um, go around Amesbury and see the sites associated with automobile manufacture. Because of course, after the carriage industry sort of died down in the 1890s with the introduction of the horseless carriage, which is the automobile, uh, Amesbury citizens that worked in the carriage industry, those that could, pivoted towards making early automobiles, early electric automobiles, early steam-powered automobiles, eventually gas. Um, so there are many spots around town where there is still evidence of the automobile industry. So this will be a walking tour um, based on um, the spots around town where you can get a little glimpse into the early auto industry, which ties in really well with the car show. Absolutely. Wow, that is a wonderful addition. Yeah. You know, I mean, I remember, boy, last year, there had to be like 300 cars downtown. I mean, yes. That was, that was crazy. It was wonderful, but it was, it was crazy. It's really become quite the event. Yes, and the museum's also sponsoring um, a kid-friendly zone. It's a kid-friendly event. There's all kinds of beautiful cars, and you know, ki kids want to touch, kids want to get in. The people are pretty good about that, most they of are. them anyway. They yeah. are, yeah. and they're very patient with the children. So we're gonna provide a few more activities um, this year, both at the museum and in the mill yard uh, for kids to kind of let off some steam between looking at all the cars. Well, you do have like the perfect front lawn there. Yes. With the slide <laughs> across the walkway. Yes. I mean, you know, it, and then the little things that you bang on it. Yeah. Right. Yes, we, we just ran through there with my granddaughter the other day. It's it is a good spot. Very, 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 very good. Um, we have about 10 minutes left. Um, is there anything that you would like to share, you know, just about the museum? Maybe people are like, wow, what a cool place. Like, maybe I want to become a member. Maybe I want to get involved more. I've, I've just retired and, you know, I've always been interested. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, two great ways to get involved. Uh, the first would be volunteering. We're always looking for volunteers. Our volunteers do, you name it, they do it, whether it's staffing the uh, Industrial History Center for visitors, sitting on a committee to help us plan these really fun activities, um, joining as a member of our board of directors, volunteering to staff one of the events that we have. We are a community-run, community-based organization. It takes many hands to help, so volunteers are always welcome. We're a very friendly group of people, so it's an easy uh, an easy place to volunteer. So we're always looking for, for volunteers. And you don't have to be history-minded. You know, you can be just somebody who loves Amesbury um, or who recently moved and is looking to get involved or a good example are people who are recently retired. Um, and then in terms of um, be 
becoming a member. We actually this past year debuted an entirely new membership system um, and each level has some pretty great benefits for reduced um, prices for tickets to using our community conference room space, advance notice of limited programs that we have that fill up fast. Um, so it's a good way to stay in the loop about what we're doing and um, you know join a community of people that really love to celebrate Amesbury's history. So membership is a great way to get involved. The other thing that I love is your website. I mean, in addition to the events calendar, you know, you have people who are who are volunteers who actually write and research and everything. And there's some amazing information. If you just like scroll through those tabs, um, there are some amazing historians. Yes. In in Amesbury, um, I mean yeah. Steve Klumps. You yeah. know, I yeah. mean he's 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 been involved and. In, um, you know, Ron Kladinsky, and I'm just yep. like trying to, you know, come up with these names off yeah. the top of my head, but it's pretty amazing what people come up with and, and, and what they create. Yes, and we like to think about history as not something that's static, that's set in stone. It's constantly evolving. There are always unanswered questions, and so we have a great dedicated um, team of both staff and volunteers who are researching those unanswered questions, you know, going in the basements of buildings and figuring out what was there before. And so that same group of people are, um, they produce uh, articles, documents, quick reads or long reads, and they're available on our website. It's actually our busiest section of our website are people going to, in addition to looking at our events, going to do research, whether that's genealogy, house history research, just local interest. Um, we do have a rich uh, resource of history and they're constantly producing it, which is awesome. You know, it's not something that stays the same. They're constantly investigating, you know, the how true is it that Ames, uh, <laughs> Amelia Earhart taught in Amesbury? I know. don't know how true is it, Kelly, <laughs> Sheila. I mean, <laughs> where's, the, where's, where's the documentation? I mean, yes. I think we need to own it because it's cool. But, it's very uh, cool. And she's, you know. she's coming. So, yeah, she's coming. Um, yeah, so it's a good opportunity to, to let people know, you know, anybody can do history. You don't have to be a historian. Right. You don't have to have all kinds of research qualifications. It's doable. Um, we have workshops at the museum um, to help people with that. We're always available for research questions. And then simply attending one of our events or joining as a volunteer, you'd be surprised how much you learn. But I love that there's, it's not just, oh, like we created this stuff 10 years ago and, and that's just all that sits there. I mean, yeah. you know, it is, con there's constantly stuff being, being generated mm -hmm. and it all, well, it mostly all seems to have ties to Amesbury. Yes. Or starts with, you know, how did that happen? Or, you know, and I and I really just love that. Yeah. Um, I do know too that you create quite a bit of children's content as well, which I think is wonderful. And, you know, I mean, I, I know that um, when we were talking earlier, um, you know, with Sheila bringing her educational background, um, we have to like create those little historians, right? I mean, yes. <laughs> we have to keep it going, right? Yep. Yeah. And, you know, by getting the little kids and their parents, you yeah. know, down to experience. and So the upcoming yeah. year we're supposed to, uh, we're hoping to introduce our drop-in play hours at the museum um, for little littles, which it can be really hard to welcome the littlest. We, you know, you have a young granddaughter. I have a one and a half year old. <laughs> they like to tear be, things apart. They do. So we're hoping to <laughs> welcome um, our littlest visitors visitors in addition to having activities for maybe their older siblings, um, homeschool, homeschool um, right. students, uh, families that have the time during the week or you know after school, that type of thing. We're, we're hoping to welcome those groups into the museum with um, things that are easy for parents to feel good about bringing their kids to do and Sheila's been a big part of that. And also, too, I mean, you may have just, well, it's your situation. I mean, you've got a little, little, and then you've got a seven-year-old. Seven. First, seven. first or second? He's in first grade. He's in first grade. Yeah, um, Oliver. Yeah, I know. I love Oliver. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, that can also be a challenge, and you're yes. not the only person that faces that type of situation to have those, you know, multi-ages yeah. that... Um, you know, you need to find something that they can all enjoy, right? right. And something mm -hmm. that you can feel good about uh, them learning. I actually think the first time we did a video together, I had the baby strapped to my front. <laughs> I saw so, that video. Yes. So you can. She was there. Yeah. She was there. Yeah. But yeah, we recognize that there's yeah. a need in the community to fill. There's a, a void to fill where, you know, you want to feel good about bringing your family to do something that, um, you know, is accessible, um, free, or expense, right. free or it's low free. cost. Right. Free or low cost. Yes. 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 Yeah. It's yeah. free. Yeah. So, 
one of the first projects I've been working on is a little interactive tour of the mill yard for children. It's an, and I use letterboxing as kind of the, the spine of the, the tour. Yeah. And they visit different sites and they, they have a little passport that they'll stamp. Oh, Within that, the parents <laughs> can scan codes and, and access the information on our website that's already available mm -hmm. and read about it. And they can, it's kind of something. And they can supplement, like, what exactly. did I see or right. what was yes. that again There's or so whatever. Many, yeah. And mm -hmm. so many times you're at a spot and your child's asking questions you don't know the answers to. So this is great. You can pull them up on your you phone. Can, you yeah. can, like, sound smart. It's a your little, kids, right? Yeah. It's a little happens bit of a occasionally, treasure. right? A little bit of a history treasure hunt around yeah. the mill yard. So. Oh, but kids love stuff like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I mean, older kids and, and adults, I mean, look at the scavenger hunts that happen I know, geocaching. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I know, I know. That's, that's awesome. So we just have a couple of minutes left. And so, um, oh my God, we've like covered, you know, miles and miles of, of information. <laughs> and it's just so nice to meet you too, Sheila. Um, if people want to get in touch, you know, email, like how do you want people to be in touch with you? And I want you to talk about the, the hours again and, sure. and all of that, if you don't mind. Yeah. So the best place to find out what's going on at the museum would be our website. So that's www.amesburycarriagemuseum.org. Uh, from there, we have our events page. All of that information is also on Facebook. So if you follow, so follow us on social media, that also can be a good place to find out what we're doing and when. Um, if you wanted to contact me, uh, my email is the letter K, like Kelly, and then my last name, Danielle, D-A-N-I-E-L-L, -L, at AmesburyCarriageMuseum.org. Sheila? And mine is the same formula in the end, but it's S. Spalding, spelled S-P-A-L-D-I-N-G. At, came at Amesbury Carriage Museum. <laughs> Museum. <laughs> Org. A very long email. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can always reach out to us there. Our office phone number is listed on our website. And then uh, the museum, the Industrial History Center, is open Thursdays in uh, 2 to 6, then Friday and Saturday, noon to 4. And we're also open for our special programs and events that happened in or around those hours. Right. And I also know that sometimes, I mean, business people, the space, if you have not been in there, I mean, please, it is just so welcoming. Um, that the space is also used by businesses. Yeah. Yeah. So how if you do they you want just feed folks to email you, Kelly? Yeah. If, we have know, a section just... on our website okay. um, for uh, rental of the space. We have a, a lovely, very flexible space. To um, we've had home buyer conferences. We've had um, a business that needed um, a place to have you know sort of like an annual party. Um, it's a good community space. It's highly visible. Um, and you lots know, of parking. Lots of parking. Yeah. It is air conditioned <laughs> in the yeah. summer if you're. Oh, well, that's in important. Summer. You know. Yep. Right. Um, good. You know all the the things you would need. Um, and in a space that is very Amesbury. It, I mean, hello, uh, yeah. you, you know, just look where it is on the backside of the, you know, Amesbury so, Industrial, you know. Yep, in a historic mill building, textile mill building, you can still see, um, you know, the remnants of, of where the machines hooked up in the ceiling yeah. and then the, our permanent exhibit is kind of out there in the background giving you an idea you're really surrounded by Amesbury history. And, and it's so there. accessible too. There's a big ramp that comes up yep. off the walkway. and Fully um, handicapped and carriage accessible. <laughs> yes, because that, ha that, <laughs> yes. that has happened. Believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah, that has definitely happened. So um, anyway, I think we're just about out of time. Anything else either one of you want to want to add before we wrap this up? I wanted to mention that student memberships to the museum are free. Oh. Okay, that mm -hmm. is really important. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a lot of wonderful schools in this area. Not not just you know the Amesbury schools. Yeah, but we have some field trips coming up to the museum. Wonderful. So okay. hopefully you'll see us around. We look forward to having you at the museum. That's terrific. Well, this has been. It always you always like. Oh, we have to talk for half an hour, and then it just like <laughs> flies by. Sheila Spaulding, who is the new Museum Education Coordinator. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. And Kelly Danielle, who is the Executive Director of the Amesbury Carriage Museum slash Industrial History Center. Yes. We'll, we'll get it all right. I mean, it's it, kind of the Carriage Museum is sort of the umbrella over, right. you know, over, over the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, we finally have a program venue, and it is in an industrial building. It's our most visible. It's okay to think of us as the Industrial History Center. Okay. All right. Right wonderful. next to Flatbread. That's sort of <laughs> right our identity. Right next to Flatbread. <laughs> 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 thank you so much for coming into the studio and thank you for watching another Around Amesbury. I'm Meryl Goldsmith.